Greetings, peeps. Man, it's a doozy out there today. Look at what kind of temperatures we got rolling. There we go. Top numbers outside, bottom numbers inside. We have 86 degrees with humidity less than 10%. That's air conditioner weather, guys. Once it gets over 85 degrees, it becomes very uncomfortable to be in the van with clothes on. And obviously I can't shoot this video naked unless you really want me to. So my goal today is to find out Will my tired old sportsman's generator with 750 hours on it still run my air conditioner? But first, I gotta dewinterize the thing. Now you guys may be wondering, how do I keep the temperature of the van inside the same as the outside? Everybody knows that inside of a vehicle is a lot hotter than the outside, especially when you're parked in direct sun, which I am right now parked in direct sunlight. Well, my first layer of protection is all the Reflectix that I have inside. I have every single window, except for the back one, because that's facing north, covered in Reflectix. I have Reflectix up here in my portal windows, held on by Velcro, which is, this is something I just did, and I'm gonna use this as one of my Hobo Tech Tips later on. I have the side windows, oh, hey, Pickle Rick. Front windows, and even this side door window which I typically have open. I have it covered in Reflectix today just because it's so hot. Of course, I only put this in about an hour ago when the sun came to this side of the van. It just, it just got too hot in there with the window open. And I usually have this open for, for air, but instead I open the back window. Since the back's facing north, and that's my bedroom, it's gonna stay the coolest. Now, as you guys saw in my video yesterday, I do have one of my silver tarps. They call these a survival blanket. It's it's foil on one side and green on the other. You can get different colors, but the important thing is it's got the foil aluminized side on it, which reflects the sun. In extreme weather conditions, over 90 degrees, I have a 12 by 12 white tarp that I'll put over the entire front of the van. It covers all the front windows, all the windows up top and the side windows. That's kind of a pain to take out and put away if I'm only gonna be here for a few days. So what I do for a short-term solution is just use the easy tarp, which I just tuck into the doors up at the top and I use magnets for the rest of it. So with just these simple things, I managed to keep the inside temperature of the van the same as the outside temperature, and there's really nothing else you can do to lower the inside temperature without using air conditioning, or unless you have a swamp cooler of some kind. But I didn't make anything like that, so we're just gonna see if the old generator still has the balls to run the air conditioner. So over the winter, when I was at Stan's, I got this piece of foam from him and I use it to cover the air conditioner in the winter time because it prevents things like bugs and stuff from coming through, sound, uh, cold air was blowing right through. This has actually worked amazing to keep the sound out, the bugs out and the heat in. Now I need to uncover it to work the air conditioner. Okay, we got the air conditioner uncovered. Now all I have to do is take the plug and run it outside to the generator now. Typically what I would do is I would just plug the air conditioner into my outlets and then let the generator charge the batteries and run the air conditioner. I can do that when I'm closer to sea level, but when I'm up here at 4,000 feet, the generator puts out about 20% less power. So I found that uh, when I'm at higher altitudes, it's a lot better just to plug the air conditioner directly into the generator. And I'm gonna do that by running an extension cord out the back window. Now in the past, I've run the extension cord across the floor and out the side door. I get tired of tripping all over it. I figured this year, I'm just gonna go ahead and run it out the door. Let's go ahead and get the extension cord hooked up and then let's go start the generator and see what we got. Happy birthday to you. Why am I singing happy birthday to my sportsman's generator? Well, it just made 750 hours. I just changed the oil. I just cleaned the air filter, took out the spark plug and cleaned and gapped it, filled it up with gas. I'm running 5W30 full synthetic, really good uh, Amazon Basics SN Plus grade oil, so the best you can get. I am running a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil in the gasoline. So this thing is totally set up. Uh, it does smoke a little bit now and then, but it still works, still been doing a good job charging my batteries, but I have not run the air conditioner on this since August or September of last year, we had the big heat wave. So I'm about to find out for the first time, and I haven't tested this yet, is it still gonna run my air conditioner or not after 750 hard hours of service? Let's see. Remember, I only paid $149 for this thing at Home Depot.
All right, there she goes. I'm leaving it on full power. I'm not putting it in economy mode because I know it's going to be hard enough to start as it is. Now let's see what she can do. By the time I get in there and turn the knob, she'll be warmed up. It only takes about 60 seconds. I also want to wash the gasoline off my hands. Okay, here we go. Okay, I got my kilowatt hour meter on there to show you what kind of wattage I'm pulling. See right there, it says 36 watts. That's the fan that I have installed. I got a cheap Walmart fan installed here behind the air conditioner to help pull the hot air out and blow it out the vents in the back. Now, when I first bought the van, I had a really poor air conditioner in here. And I blame that uh, in hindsight, but it was kind of overheating the cabinet back there. So I put a fan in there. When I put the new air conditioner, I just left it in figuring, why remove it? It's worked so well to blow the hot air outside. But what would happen is that this would get really hot. Like you, you could put your hand on here and it would be like 120 degrees. It was like really hot. And that was telling me that the hot air wasn't getting outside and that was causing the air conditioner to overheat and it was kicking on and off all the time. I have not had that problem with the new air conditioner. So here we go. I'm gonna put it on uh, low fan and then low coal, then high coal. We're gonna see what happens. Low fan. Well, good news, it doesn't stink or didn't blow a bunch of dust in here. For 82 watts. Let's go ahead and kick it on low coal and see what happens. Just under 400 watts. That's total draw to the air conditioner. That's not too bad. Let's go to high coal. Notice the wattage doesn't really change. So while it's running, it pulls just under 400 watts. That's pretty efficient. The air's definitely coming out cool. It'll take a few minutes for it to really cool down, but it's definitely working. And there we are, pulling under 400 watts on that 800 watt generator at 4,000 feet altitude. Okay, now I'm gonna go put the generator in economy mode and see if it slows down, it should. That means it's able to run the air conditioner even in economy mode once it's started. Now, at lower altitudes, I had no problem starting the air conditioner in economy mode. And I probably could still do that, but I think it's a little less stressful on the generator to do it this way. It's actually pulling a little over 400 watts now, closer to 420, as the compressor reaches full capacity. I'll tell you what, that air is nice and cool. This is really going to come in handy tomorrow when it gets close to 90 degrees. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm actually running the cable through the back door. And this is temporary. If I was going to be running the air conditioner for a long period of time, I would kind of tuck this wire up behind my curtains and stuff, close all the cabinetry, close the curtain, and put all the extra reflectics back up in here to keep it nice and cool. Interestingly, we're up to 450 watts. This is definitely about the max it's going to pull, though. Now here's a hobo tech tip about these generators. Hobo tech tip. It tells you to put 10 ounces of oil in. That's wrong. Put any more than eight ounces in, it'll smoke. And it'll smoke a lot worse than this. They have a new pamphlet they put in with these generators that tell you to put no more than seven and a half ounces in. Now I didn't measure exactly, but that is less than half on the dipstick. Actually, it's about a third on the dipstick as the level you want to measure to. Otherwise, you have to deal with some smoking like this, and it's been doing it since I bought it. Every time I do an oil change, I couldn't figure out why until I saw that Sportsman put out a bulletin that the original instructions were wrong, the dipstick is wrong, you put seven and a half ounces of oil in and no more, otherwise it'll, it'll smoke. I did just dump a little bit of oil out. It's gonna burn off what's in the chamber and spark plug now, which will take a little bit. So that's gonna bring me to, I know what is gonna be your next question. How long can I run my air conditioner on one tank of gas? Well, I've had that run for nine hours on 0.55 gallons, which is the capacity of the tank, just over half a gallon. I've had it run nine hours just running computers and stuff when I was hanging out with Billy in Idaho. But when I'm running the air conditioner, it's running the generator at 75% capacity or so. I get about somewhere around between five and six hours on a half a tank of gas. And that'll get you through the heat of the day for a buck fifty. Uh, 
Try to beat that at an RV park where they're charging you $30, $40 a day plus electricity. It's still way cheaper to run your own generator, even a larger one than this for your air conditioner. Now I bought the smallest generator I could find for size reasons, for fuel economy reasons. I think this is like only a 40 cc motor. I wanted the bare minimum to run that air conditioner because I know it's more fuel efficient. Now here is the one upside to being in direct sunlight with all this heat. And that is you can put your solar panels out, let your solar panels charge your batteries while the generator separately runs your air conditioner. It's super efficient that way. It takes the load off the generator. And since I got all the sun anyway, it's charging my batteries for me. Now, if I was in a national forest, that'd be a different story. Uh, it's actually a lot harder in the national forest when it's hot because you really got to find a spot for your solar panels to get sun all day long. That's kind of hard when you're surrounded by trees. And at the same time, you got the generator, but you need to charge your batteries too. And I've actually had more problems being in the shade than being in the sun when it comes to this combination. I think it's a great combo. Keep an eye out for when those sportsman generators go on sale for it because 150 bucks is a great deal. I do have on my Amazon page, hobotech.tv slash Amazon, alternatives to this generator that should do just as good, if not better for most of you. Um, of course, it's gonna be more expensive. You're talking over $200. Like I think most of the generators I have there are two to $400. When this thing finally blows up and it will, I'm probably gonna go for a Westinghouse iGen 1200. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more powerful, and Westinghouse, you know, what could you say bad about Westinghouse? A lot better than Chinese. Although, I've been impressed with this so far, the first 750 hours of ownership, so we're gonna see how it goes, and I just realized I'm standing on a friggin' anthill. Well, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something from this. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. So Odin, what do you think of the air conditioning? Do you give any Fs about that? Huh? Give any Fs about the air conditioner? Can the force be with you? I'll tell you what, you're gonna give a lot of Fs when it's over 90 degrees outside and you're in here in a nice cool air conditioning. Huh, you're gonna really like the air conditioner then. Oh yeah? You gonna eat me? Ow, 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 ow. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Are we gone, guys? Joe Lazaro, cat.